Hello YouTube, hopefully we've got the audio in the helmet sorted. Um, this is a bit of a, a test. Uh, I'll be out on the road in a minute um, for the proper test, but uh, before I go I need to uh, give this lot their uh, morning treat. So, uh, let's see if we do it without losing any. Penny, get out the basket because I can't open the door with that. No, okay, it's already gone wrong. Right, you two get in. We're going to open this door instead. Tilly, get back. Get back. Out. Right, as long as you two stay there, we'll be alright. So, love and I. There you go. Badger. There you go. You see why she's called Badger. Nala. Second oldest. Indy. Good girl. Tilly, you're about to fall out. There you go. Penny. And where is Remy? Remy. She is a bit poorly. She's full of cancer, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, she's in no healthy state to undergo an operation. Good girl, there you go. Bin man. How many points for a bin man? Sorry, bin person. <laughs> Sorry. Waste disposal collector agent? Uh. <laughs> yes, welcome to 2017. No, it's not, it's 2018. Welcome to 2018. Um, Tiptoe around and try not to offend anybody. So, an update on the camera and the microphone. Uh, camera is, uh, well, pretty damn good, if you ask me. Um, my only uh, little gripes is uh, the colours do seem to be a little bit undersaturated, washed out sort of thing. A few people did point that out in the little bits of test footage I put up, and um, I think it's partially to do with the time of year. Everything's kind of a bit grey and brown anyway. Um, I think in the summer, and there's more green around, I don't think it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But yeah, even with the vivid colour setting, which them test videos were in, uh, it did seem like they were a bit not quite as rich as I would expect. Um, but that's no major issue because it can be corrected in editing anyway. It just adds to the render times, which, um, depending on what software you're using, uh, I'm using Final Cut Pro, and that seems to be actually pretty quick at rendering these days, so um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue for me. And, uh, yeah, my major gripe about the camera, of course, is the same as everybody else who's uh, tried to use one of these Sony FDR-X300s with a microphone. It's just too sensitive and you can't do anything about it in the settings. It's... it's awful. <laughs> um, apparently, from what I can tell, the only two microphones now, I know of two, uh, that work well with this camera is the Sony ECM CS3 microphone. Kind of understandable, it's a Sony mic, it should work in a Sony camera without issue. Um, a red box has got one and uh, he says that it works perfectly fine. It just gets a bit too much wind noise, but he hasn't got a um, windshield on his. So, yeah, that's easily uh, rectifiable. Uh, the other one, which actually sounds better than the Sony, I think, uh, which I stumbled across yesterday, and I, I was going to order one, but uh, it looks like you can only get them in the States. And uh, it's a motor blogger who makes them himself. He's got 3D printer and stuff, so he makes all sorts of, sorts of uh, motor vlog related parts, which is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, he's... What's it, oh, what's it called? Uh, Hellmic? I think it's called, um, but he did it. He did an on-the-road test with both the Sony and his own microphone, and uh, his one. Yeah, it was ju it, it's got a bit more of an edge to the Sony. Um, it's certainly more because it's designed to work in a helmet. It's um, yeah, it works quite well. Um, so I'm going to try and get hold of one of them somehow if I can. With regards to the actual microphone I am using now. Uh, I found my old, it was that mini microphone that I ordered, um, I did remember doing a bit of a video on it, it was, um, yeah, pretty good, because it was, it was like a really tiny microphone, and um, it obviously it fits well in a helmet. I found that, and I thought it had stopped working, which is why I didn't expect it to work, but when I did test it in this, it did, it worked, but I went to use it in the drift at the weekend, and it didn't work, so I'm not sure what the problem is. So, but yeah, it doesn't work in the drift, but it works in this, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've got that, but of course, yeah, it was too loud. Uh, but what I have got now is a little cheapo inline headphone volume control, which I'm using to just uh, dampen the signal down. And uh, that seems to be doing the trick. It's not the most ideal solution because 
I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. Um, probably not in this sort of environment, but when I was doing a, uh, a test just at home, sat at my desk, you could hear a bit of a, there was a bit of a background hiss. A bit like the old drift mic used to do in the uh, original ghost camera. Um, but I'm hoping with a bit more noise around, such as this lorry, the environment. Oh, it's the Sons of Anarchy lorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that um, that can kind of uh, be not picked up too much. So at least uh, temporarily, I'm good with sound. So hopefully we're about there. Now my only other little uh, thing I need to sort out is the camera position. Because as you can probably tell, when I'm moving my head a bit, you do get the, uh, you see the peak of my visor. Peak of my visor? Peak of my helmet. And the visor, I suppose. Uh, wandering into the shop now and again, or it's probably in the shop permanently, uh, the way I've got it set up at the minute, I'm not sure. Um, and with the steady shot, that's a little bit... Mm, not good. <laughs> it, it doesn't look the best. Uh, so I am going to try and um, get the camera mounted further forward on my helmet, so it doesn't get any of the helmet in the shot. Uh, I've been playing around with mounts, and I just cannot get the right angle at the minute with the mounts I've got. I can get it in the right position, like, forwards, um, and where I want it, but I can't get the rotation of the camera to keep the lens straight. Now, if the camera had the rotatable lens, like Drift does, it wouldn't be a problem. So yeah, other than the mounting options are a bit fiddly, like the GoPro, it, it does make you realise how good the Drift is on a helmet. It is The Drift probably still is the most ideal... Uh, issues aside, issues aside, <laughs> uh, the Drift is the most uh, suitable uh, for a helmet, motorbike helmet, and motor vlog setup, I would say. With the Sonys and GoPros, there's a lot more fiddling. A lot more. Trust me. <laughs> um, so yeah, apart from the audio issues, which they could easily fix with a firmware update, which they haven't done a firmware update for this camera at all, as far as I can tell anyway. It's just on the uh, version 1 firmware, so... They should really address that. So yeah, other than that, and uh, the potential uh, colour problems, which is only a really minor thing. Um, yeah, that's um, that's it. Otherwise, I'm really happy with this camera. I mean, it looks superb, and the steady shot works so well. And uh, I've actually toned the steady shot down. There's, t there's three options. You can have it off, standard, or full, basically. Uh, that, that test footage I did was in full. I've turned it down to standard now, so it's not quite as um, active. Because uh, to use Phil Tonic's words, uh, the standard one does make it look a little less boaty. <laughs> Which, yeah, I get what you're saying. It can sometimes look like a bit like it is d doing a bit too much. But yeah, the standard one seems about right. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's that. Uh, oh, we, we're going a bit faster now, so hopefully the sound's all right. 55 miles an hour. Uh, visor fully closed. Actually, let's do an open visor. I can hardly hear myself talk, and the wind is blowing the windshield into my mouth, so I am eating that, and it doesn't taste good. Anyway, I think that'll do for this video. Thanks for watching, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Ta-da!